Welcome to this brief webinar on Transcendent Identity. The surest path to well-being and improved relationships is to identify with your most humane motivations. Compassion, kindness, appreciation, respect, and honesty, and integrity and cooperation. Now, I did wanted to make this a special slide because cooperation is important in relationships and in all social interactions, really. It's so important that we get an internal reward when we feel cooperative. But it must be tempered by integrity. That means fidelity to your deepest values. So you can't cooperate with someone to violate your own values just for the sake of cooperation. So cooperation, while it's an important motivation, an important value, has to be tempered by personal integrity. Now, the main motivations are transcendent. They elevate us, and that's why they're central to most notions of spirituality. Think of times when you were compassionate, kind, and appreciative, respectful, honest, and cooperative with integrity. Were those not times when you felt better about yourself and the world in general? At those times, did you demand or even seek validation from others? Or were you self-validating? You knew and accepted who you were. We know that acting on humane motivations is good for us. So why don't we do it more often? And the answer is pretty simple. It's dread. Dread of feeling overwhelmed. There's too many people in the world. We can't handle it all. Uh, taken advantage of or exploited. And those are, are real threats. But the main motivations have natural regulators that protect us. Focus on compassion, kindness, and appreciation for loved ones naturally limits the resources available for others without guilt or belligerence. What I mean by the guilt or belligerence, you, you get a glimpse of that when you give to charity. If you give anything to charity, you're going to be loaded with emails or letters from similar or, or completely different charities because they sell the, the addresses to each other. Uh, and you get a little irritated with that, a little belligerent about it. And that's really coming from guilt because part of you, no matter how irrational it is, thinks that you should give to all of these needy causes. But if you are focused on being compassionate, kind, and appreciative to the people you love, you will naturally limit the amount of available resources so that you can say, this is a worthy cause. It's the best I can do the best I can give, uh, and you won't feel guilty or minimal guilt and no belligerence. Now, the surest path to personal misery and relationship failure is to identify with your ego, and that's how you want others to think of you. Ego is not real. It's a construct. It's a way of preparing a face to meet the faces that you meet, to paraphrase T.S. Eliot. And I would add a way of preparing the, to meet the face you see in the mirror. So it's how you want to think of yourself and how you kind of demand that other people think of you. That's ego. Now, the risks of ego identity. Now, we all have an ego. I'm, I'm not saying ego in itself is bad. But identifying with your ego is bad because that's going to make you likely to engage in impression management. You're trying to manage the impressions that other people have of you. And if your whole well-being depends on those impressions, it's going to have a lot of emotional intensity. So impression management is inherently going to be insincere, hypocritical, if not deceitful. Manipulation, you're trying to get people to think of you in a certain way, and you'll manipulate or seduce them into doing that. 
and imposter syndrome. That's when you feel like whatever praise or accomplishments you have, you don't really deserve. It's an imposter syndrome. That's very interesting because I have some wealthy clients, I mean, billionaires who are enormously successful, but all of them have to some degree that imposter syndrome, like they're going to be found out one day. A different problem with ego identity is when the identity is genuine and valid, but narrow, based on only one or two aspects of who you are as a person. Narrow identity hurts because it seems like it's all you are and all you have. I've seen many young people in terrible, heartbreaking pain over other people misusing pronouns. It felt like they were being erased as persons. Their pain was heartbreaking because there was so much more to them as people. So much more that could never be erased by careless or rude or even hostile responses they get from others. Identity should never be painful. Multifaceted identity based on your sense of humanity is transcendent. You will never be hurt by other people's opinions or behavior. We can transform the pain of identity into self-validating power by acting on our most humane motivations as often as possible.